Hey guys, I'm just uh, making a random video about my experience with coffee machines. Uh, I first got introduced to coffee or making coffee by using those pod machines. Uh, they are good if you don't have any experience in coffee in terms of just introduce yourself to coffee. Uh, they are, but my personal experience with pod machines is that they are only good with espresso. If you want to have um, milk with it, it becomes very, it becomes cold, it, the coffee becomes weak, um, and not very good. So that was the reason why I got this machine, um, the Sunbeam, I don't know what model it is, it's just a cheap generic machine that, you know, provides to many companies and they have their own name and whatnot. And I've had this machine for a couple of years, and I've just recently upgraded to this Breville one, uh, the Breville Barista Pro. And I'm loving it so far. I've only had it for about a week and I'm just waiting for some more beans to arrive before I can continue using it. But I just wanted to um, share my experiences with the machine and like the pros and cons and what's and what do you get with a more expensive one and what are the better features and all that. Well generally with the cheap machine you don't have many customization features. It's literally just a button and you can't really change it. So if you press once you get a one shot, if you press two you get two shots and if you hold it down then it will keep going until you tell it to stop. And then you have like these preset cappuccino and latte features, which I wouldn't use personally. But what I do is, um, if you use a cappuccino or latte, they usually spout the milk first and then the coffee, which is quite complete opposite of what how you make coffee. Usually you do the espresso first and then you put the milk in. So, um, at first when I bought this machine, I thought this was really good. It had like, oh has this milk really easy and it froths the milk um, and then I soon out found out that it froths the milk really badly it has all this bubbly and out of control it spurts like crazy and it's not clear because when you pour milk into your coffee the milk should after frothing it should be crystal you know it should be like have no bubbles um, and very clear um, but with this it's like Bubble, massive bubbles, and yeah, and and even even that after that, the um, the milk is not warm enough. So I often had to find out, found out that I had to like froth the milk and then put it in the um, microwave for like ten seconds. Anything more than ten seconds, and it just explodes. <laughs> uh, so what I generally do is, or what I found my best option using this machine was to extract the coffee um, in a separate um, mug and then extract the milk itself separately and I'll use it uh, use the froth option so I wouldn't use the preset cappuccino or latte I'll just hold down the froth button and it'll keep on frothing the um, the milk until I tell it to stop and um, that's generally how I do it I like put a teaspoon or tablespoon against and try to like get the milk without all those bubbles. So it was quite a, a messy, complicated procedure to get coffee. Um, and I also found that the extracting the coffee was not very good and I only realized that it wasn't very good until I switched to the new machine. So um, when you extract coffee, it should be easy to take out the coffee. It just comes out, it has its own form, but with this coffee, um, it would become all muddy and you had to kind of like scoop it with a teaspoon and um, it sucked. And um, often this would only extract like, if you do like two dose or the preset thing, it only extract it for like 16 seconds and it would be like dark and then light and dark and you can tell that, that it's like had a... Um, uh, channel, lots of channeling going on uh, when you extract the coffee. So it's either it's either um, not enough pressure, or the grind isn't um, fine enough, or not in the correct setting. And that's the thing about this coffee machine: uh, you need an actual external uh, grinder um, 
whereas this more expensive one it's built in so on the side you can choose the grind setting and then you can choose the ground amount um, which is really cool and if you you can preset it so you can tell um, have the perfect dose so when you tap it in it automatically comes out the perfect amount the perfect grind um, and once you figure that that's making coffee is super easy and convenient another thing about this machine that I hated was that um, this water tank it um, it's very very hard to clean as you can see there's all this yuck and muck um, I, recent, I recently cleaned it, um, I searched up on YouTube, someone saying, oh, you have to fill it with rice and some detergent and then shake it up, but you can see it's, it's, it's um, still kind of dirty there, so um, it was also difficult. Um, so, w with this machine, it would come with those plastic things, and I bought like a cheap tampo, it was like 50 bucks. Um, it's a lot better, but um, obviously it's not the best because um, it's a cheap one. And usually cheap tampers are, well, not very good. But, um, you know, I was experiencing, I was learning, and um, yeah. So, another thing is... Um, since everything, it just seems everything was a hassle, you know, because um, the, the coffee would be all muddy and it would be difficult to clean out and sometimes I couldn't be bothered cleaning it out because you just have to constantly clean it every time you use it, right? And so it's meant to be convenient, but that's what you get for a cheap machine. You have to maintain it um, regularly. Like, literally, every time you make a coffee, you have to clean it. Um, and I found that if you're using a jug like this, um, you, you end up filling it up with old milk with new milk, and it mixes it up. And even when you... Even when you use... Like, if even if it's completely clean, and you fill it up with milk, and you put it in the fridge, it will create this... Um, milk film and it'll get to the bottom and become yuck and that'll affect your future coffees so um, try not try to change the milk like every third day or something or every second day or even just clean and wash it out every time you finish making a coffee because it um, gets dirty really quickly and uh, it's such a hassle so, there is a cleaning feature, and um, there are different frothing settings, but even at the lowest frothing setting, it was just crazy. Um, so if you go down to, at the bottom, and hold down the clean, it will clean, um, extract, and clean the, the um, you know, the, um, the inside of the machine, um, and make sure you... Uh, change or um, flush the, the potter filler because there's always going to be um, grind um, staying up there and that will also affect your coffee. So that's my experience with mis this machine. Uh, it was a, a, a good experience um, and I wouldn't have really been able to fully appreciate this machine if I didn't have to, if I didn't go through this machine first because, um, sure, it wasn't, I mean, sure, it's better than the pod machine, but it still wasn't amazing either. But when I use this machine, it, it, uh, I have, I have an idea of how to make coffee now through the whole, through the years, from using the pod machine to this machine, and now this machine, so I've like upgraded over the years and had a better understanding how to make coffee. And then, you know, with coffee, it's an art. There's different ways of making it. Um, so you're always learning. Um, so, um, yeah, that's just my review of this machine. I'll make a separate um, video um, to review this machine. And um, I'm actually giving this 